Guess what, Nige? We are halfway across Australia. Yay! Ooh. Halfway there! In this episode, we drive down the west coast of South Australia's Air Peninsula. We leave Penong, where we visited the Windmill Museum, and drove out to Lake McDonald, the pink lake that wasn't pink. You'll see some weird rock formations, incredible coastline, a famous movie set, and some wildlife. Good morning friends. Today we are in Streaky Bay and it's not a very nice day. We were going to go for a walk along the foreshore but it's actually raining so we've decided to go for a scenic drive and hopefully the weather picks up. of starlings and we're wondering like how do they know to all keep together do is there one leader and they all follow or do they chirp and talk to each other while they're flying or is it just one of those things that they know anyone knows let us know in the comments we're fascinated We're just having a quick stop on the Cape Bower Loop Road. We've just had coffee and we're going to walk out on this track here. Apparently there's some whistling rocks and blowholes. There's only one other person here. It's just wild and beautiful out here. The coastline here was so wild and the sound of the whistling rocks was like nothing we'd ever heard. It's crazy just watching the water eating out the underside of that cliff when the waves come crashing and just wondering when the ne next big tumble is going to happen. We were just about to walk away from this lookout and I saw what must be the whistling rocks. <laughs> it's these holes here, but I think we don't have the right conditions today, but it's pretty cool seeing these holes. <laughs> I wonder if they go all the way down. So we heard there's a replica of a giant great white shark that they caught here in Streaky Bay, five meters. We've been looking for it and it turns out it's actually inside the service station. It must be a big service station. So they actually believe this is the largest great white shark ever caught in the world at 1,500 kilograms. Caught right here in Streaky Bay in 1990 took them three hours to tow it in. Five hours. Five hours. Mm -hmm. And on its side here, this they said was a scar, a mating love bite. We feel a bit bad. I mean, why? Mm. Beautiful animal. It's, it's to kill it. Fish and chips from the fish fix for lunch today. Nigel's back there telling them how much we enjoyed it. Look at that. Back to the van to munch on this, I think. 
I just had an uh, interesting conversation with the uh, one of the ladies that cooked our awesome fish and chips, and she was saying that um, yeah, there was a, a, a rather unfortunate attack just down the road at uh, Ellis, Elliston Beach, um, but she was saying that the fishermen are limited to uh, five gummy sharks per day, and they're all lying caught, so that's a good thing. Um, and she was also saying that her husband is an abalone uh, fisherman, so an abalone diver. So um, you know they're probably in, in most harm's way when it comes to being in the sharks' environment. And uh, she was saying that yeah, they lost one one diver um, within the last 12 months. Yeah, I was reading that most people in the town swim in the that's like a net, so an enclosure, because there are so many great white sharks out here. We have come this afternoon to the Murphy's Haystacks. Now these are not haystacks, but rocks, which apparently look like haystacks. I'll let you guys decide. Murphy's Haystacks are a collection of Iselberg rocks, or weathered granite outcrops. They were named Murphy's Haystacks as a passing traveller thought they looked like haystacks, and the farmer at the time was named Murphy. This is an awesome little stop. It's on private property, so there is an entry charge to get in here, but it's been set up really well. So you just pay your little $2 per person donation there. There's a toilet building there, Nigel's just coming out of, and there's a really good path that takes you all around through the haystacks. And you can camp here for $10 a night. So big thumbs up to the landowner here, the farmer. He's um, done a fantastic job of setting this up for people to come and visit and so many fantastic photo opportunities. And just when we thought we'd seen all the haystacks, there's more. <laughs> no, I'm just making all the jokes because apparently these ones look quite phallic. Mm. Well, they do you, look more like haystacks. Well, I'll let you guys decide, but they, they definitely look more uh, haystacky, if not slightly knobbish. Yeah, that's a knob. Yeah. Great word, that. Knob. <laughs> The pronunciation, isn't it? <laughs> no, b. <laughs> So earlier today we visited the knob and now we're at the tub. The tub. <laughs> <laughs> the base of the rocks. Or a tub. Shit, it's like a sinkhole. The tub is a large crater in the sea cliff. It's over 10 metres deep and has a tunnel connecting it to the sea. Hey little guy, how you doing? It's so cool. Gotta be careful of this um, swell, but it'll, it'll be the entrance to the cave over there. Or oh, what used to be the cave. Just sort of see the sea line. This is it's pretty cool. But how's the colour of the rocks? We really wish Nigel would get away from the edge because I don't want him to get swept off. Hey okay, Nigel, you need to come back now. We've just arrived at the Talia cave. We're walking down these steps to get down to the cave and the 
seascape here is just incredible. I mean, look at this. I just went, went ass over tit, smashed the, well, splashed the camera, smashed the camera. I think it's okay still, um, but probably just as well we got turned back because these waves are um, starting to get a bit hairy. So we didn't get to the rock pools, uh, but uh, yeah, more concerned about not getting caught in this tide. We found this beautiful spot just a bit further up the cliff where we decided to have a sneaky free camp for the night. Good news and bad news, friends. <laughs> There's no wine. Ah. Oh, that's double bad news. Yeah. <laughs> First bit of bad news, there's no wine. Second bit of bad news, the gas just ran out while Nigel's cooking dinner. <laughs> Third bit of bad news, Nigel has to go out and change it. The good news, neither of us was in the shower when it happened. <laughs> in our naughty bits. He's getting the head torch on. <laughs> Off you go, old man. Bit of caving. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Morning. Look at where we stayed last night. So we're near the Talia Caves. And um, we did a bit of a sneaky wild camp here last night. And yeah, as you can see, and no doubt here, it's blowing a gale today. So we've come on this ocean tourist drive. We're near Elliston and it's such a beautiful day. The wind here is crazy. So all the way around this little loop are all these bizarre sculptures. Another quirky thing for our road trip. However, we're a lot more impressed by the waves at the moment because the surf is pumping today. While Nigel was checking out the surf, he spotted a pod of dolphins having fun out in the waves. That was, that was some show, wasn't it? There they are. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Great spot, Nige. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. Oh my god. Oh, that's yeah. just made my yeah. week. It's <laughs> a yeah, well, it, was, it was weird because I was thinking about surfers as I read the sign. Um, and, uh, and then I looked out and I thought, hang on a minute, is that a couple of surfers in wetsuits? Nope, that'd be dolphins and and uh, yeah we just got treated to what 15 minutes they, they came right up close to the um, yeah. uh, to the cliffs there and uh, watched some fishing and surfing and, yeah j surfing the waves and, and one even jumped out of the water and uh, and then I'm sure I saw one up having a bit of a having yeah. a chat yeah yeah squeaking and oh that was so cool that was magic we've made a little stop this afternoon just here um, it's called Cummings Lookout. 
I forget who Cummings was, but it's a monument here, so I can tell you he died in a shipwreck. But the cool thing about this spot is the view. I was going to say, these guys behind me, these surfers, uh, like True Blue, they got balls of steel. Um, and I, I say that because well, there's one about to catch a wave now. There was a uh, surfer taken here on this area uh, and, and three mouthfuls, they tell us. A lot more balls than I've got. I'm sure it's, we've got one paddle border and about three or four surfers. And another wave. Park and look who's welcomed us. Oh, hey buddies. Another one of the local residents in Coffin Bay, the emu. And because we're in such a seafood heaven, we're having fish tacos. Mm. Yeah, to wash down the horses and <laughs> beer. We got some fresh <laughs> flake shark. Awesome. We love fish tacos. <laughs> and look at us, we're all clean. I just had a shave. I've washed my hair. We stayed last night in this lovely caravan park here in Coffin Bay. And I just, just filled up the water. We've had hot showers. I've washed my hair. We're going to go off today. We're going to do a quick explore of Coffin Bay. Maybe see some oyster beds, Nigel. Mm. Nigel might need to buy some more oysters. It's and... It's given. <laughs> then we'll head up to Farm Beach. The whole Eyre Peninsula is known for seafood and here in Coffin Bay their oysters are some of the best in the country. You can even buy oysters here in a vending machine. So now I'm just, just checking out the um, oyster vending machine here at Oyster HQ. I'm going to share this with you. Oh, I'm getting pretty excited here. Take a look at that. So we've got um, squeeze of uh, lemon juice, uh, a bit of soy sauce, um, this sliced uh, pickled ginger, a little bit of that, pepper, and the secret sauce, Kai Tai Fire. Oh, mouth is watering. Just the best. One of the things that we're seeing everywhere in South Australia is these beautiful old churches. One of the things that we love about our van is these magnetic bug screens from Living in a Bubble. They have been such a lifesaver. So much better than the Bunnings ones that we used to have on the van that would blow open in the slightest breeze. However, we're a bit lazy and we leave them up all the time. They're kind of designed to be just put up when you need them but we just like to leave it up. And just because of the design of our van, because this part of the kitchen bench comes out a little bit too far, we've had a few times where the bug screen has gotten stuck down here around this door catch. Uh, and I think twice now we've actually had to go to the inside mechanism of the door to release it. Nigel's come up with an ingenious way to trim it back, I'll let him explain what he's going to do. Well, I was looking for something to potter, and this is going to be a good potter. <laughs> On your Harry? Yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do is cut the fly screen short here on this right side, and um, I'll put some magnetic strips underneath the um, the bench, and then I've got. We're going to use this end unused end which has obviously got the magnets and I'll sew that to that shortened end so it'll solve that issue that'll clip out of the way and then this side here 
um, I've got this uh, leftover magnetic strip um, and I'll glue that to this side and then these magnets will simply clip onto there and uh, that way we can, all we're going to do is just quickly lift that inside, shut the door and we're not going to get jammed up as we have been. <laughs> Yo! This afternoon we are going for a little walk up to the Gallipoli beach. So it's about four kilometres walk up there. There is apparently a rough four wheel drive track. We have decided to walk. Here we go, four kilometres and there's a memorial up here. You're entering the road to Gallipoli Beach, the site where the movie Gallipoli was filmed in 1981. And there's four plaques here commemorating various different battles. Of course, it wasn't known as Turkey then. Nigel was just commenting on the state of this road. It's pretty jaggedy. What did you say, Nigel? Jaggedy ass. What I want to know is how they got down here to make a film set. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah, maybe came in on boats or helicopters. I doubt they would have come in over this road. What about Mel Gibson? Where did he stay? Did he stay in the caravan park in Farm Beach like us? He wasn't a big star back then. Well, looks like we're here. We just got to get down to the beach. Hey guys, so we've made it to Gallipoli Beach, uh, scene of the 1981 movie Gallipoli, starring Mel Gibson. There's no one else here, just the two of us. It's taken us uh, just over an hour to get here, four kilometre hike. Um, it's, it's, just, it's a beautiful um, scene here. boats out. Uh, when we were walking back from Gallipoli yesterday we saw dolphins out here so it'd be really cool to see some again today. I think it would be a really nice beach if there wasn't all this seagrass everywhere. Gotta say it's quite chilly. Are we gonna get a Nigel dive though? It's a numbing cold. He's going in in his undies. Yeah, not with your glasses. Oh my God. Friends, I did not think we would get a Nigel dive today, but there you go. It's that, it's that tingling feeling you get, you know, you just want to break out with a bit of Monty Python. Hey guys, well I've got my trusty, well, I say trusty rod and reel, but um, I've only caught one flathead, or maybe, yeah, one flathead, maybe a couple of um, okay, darts. Uh, so I'm gonna get, but anyway, I'm gonna give it a go here at uh, Farm Beach. I've just been. Um, uh, talking to one of the uh, our fellow campers 
and he's he's kind of got my hopes up i must say he said that uh this is the best fishing for king whiting anywhere in australia so man no pressure if i can't catch a fish here i'm never going to catch one right and look you know worst case scenario it's just a idyllic location and a beautiful night there's not a breath of wind out there I wonder if he's catching anything. He's been here all day. I'll give him perseverance points. Beautiful evening, uh, but um, <laughs> no fish. So we're gonna have to retreat tail between the legs yet again. Old mate didn't bank on uh, Old Nigel being the, the Jonah when it comes to fishing. So I just walked down to get some footage of this cool sunset by the beach. But as I turned around to walk back to the camp, I noticed this massive full moon rising. Look at it. That looks wicked. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. Join us next week when we go camping with some new friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time.